We need to talk about science denial. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the feelings of exasperation and frustration when you're trying to get through to someone who believes in something that is demonstrably false and you present them with irrefutable evidence, meta-analyses and peer-reviewed scientific research, statistics and facts, and still they laugh at you and mock you and call you crazy and refuse to accept the evidence. It, it's something that drives me crazy. Now, all my arguments about dogs, well, maybe not all of them. I, I, I have some opinion pieces, but a lot of my videos, I'd say most of them are, you know, my, my ideas that I'm trying to get across are based on science. And uh, why don't people accept science? Why don't, why do they deny it? Because science, like Neil deGrasse Tyson says, science is true whether or not you believe in it. And so it's incredibly frustrating to deal with people who deny facts and deny scientific evidence. At least for me, I'm sure many of you can relate. And uh, I've talked in the past about cognitive dissonance, which is that uncomfortable feeling that arises within a person when they are uh, presented with uh, evidence that goes against their beliefs. Uh, they will often attack the messenger and deny the evidence because it, it feels like an attack on their identity. Because the fact is, our beliefs, um, they, they're they tied in with our identities. So when someone attacks our beliefs, we feel that as a personal attack. We become defensive. And often what happens is uh, people will dig their heels in and and become even more sure of what they believe in which is the opposite of what we're trying to do right so sometimes i feel really upset and confused and i think what am i doing with my channel am i only causing people to experience this backfire effect maybe i'm making things worse uh, and i'm making people even more confident that dogs are uh you know our best friends and are wonderful uh this is not my goal. I want to raise awareness and I want people to see the reality of dogs and cats. And uh, how am I accomplishing that? Recently, I've gotten into some very upsetting uh, interactions with uh, climate change deniers and uh, people who deny uh, the gravity of the current pandemic uh, people who are, uh, you know, these anti-vaxxers and so forth. All of these people drive me crazy. And to be honest with you, I have a bigger issue with conspiracy theorists than I do with dog worshippers. I think conspiracy theorists and science deniers are an even bigger threat to humanity than dog and cat worshippers. And uh, so that's why I deny them a platform upon which to spread their unscientific, you know, nonsensical, anti-human, dangerous ideas, which so far have killed over 1 million people worldwide. I'm just talking about COVID-19 now and people who wanted to spread misinformation about COVID-19 on my channel. I've banned them from my channel and I've been accused of disrespecting my supporters. How many of these deaths could have been prevented if everyone had listened to scientists and done what we were told? It's hard to say. I think many of them. How many lives could have been saved if everyone had listened to scientists about vaccinations? How many lives would be saved in the future if everyone would listen to climate scientists and take what they're saying seriously? I've been reading about science denial and the science of science denial, and I'm going to share a couple of links for you in the description. There are actually a lot of different websites that you can find and. Uh, from what I see, they're all basically saying the same thing. And this is the message I want to give to you in this video. This article here states that psychologists say that the denial of facts 
is often rooted in identity and belonging, not in ignorance, and that changing minds may require a lot more than sound reasoning. Okay, so what do we do? I have been trying to reason with dog and cat worshippers. It doesn't work. Uh, so what do we do? Uh, this is what we need to talk about. We want to make the world a safer place for humans. We want to defend humans from the scourge and the menace that is dogs and cats. How can we do this if not through reasoning? Well, it states that people who deny science are often trying to uphold membership in something that they find meaningful. That meaningful thing could be a political or religious affiliation or some other group that prizes certain ideas or ideals. Whatever shape that group takes, the important thing is that it has other members. It's a community. Now, I think that I had an easier time accepting facts uh, that conflicted with, with what I believed because... I never identified strongly with any group. I grew up under very unique circumstances. Uh, I, I grew up belonging to three different cultures simultaneously. Cultures that were quite different from each other. And so uh, it was kind of confusing, uh, but I never identified strongly with any of them. And uh, so maybe because of that, I grew up feeling more independent minded, you know, I, um, I don't know, but, uh, a lot of people do identify strongly with their community, whatever that community is. And so the article states that once a community absorbs an idea into its collective viewpoint, rejecting that idea becomes akin to rejecting the whole community. And that sort of rejection is a very, very difficult thing for any of its members to do. So again, because I never felt like I was a part of any community, it was easy for me to reject the things that I believed. I did believe for most of my life that dogs were wonderful because that is something that everyone around me was saying. But uh, I, I, I always felt sort of like the outsider, like, uh, you know, that I never really fit in anywhere. So for me to reject an idea, it wasn't a big deal. I, I already felt like an outcast. Do you know what I mean? Like I didn't really belong anywhere. So what was I to lose? There was nothing to lose for me. But what are we going to do with people who do feel like they have something to lose? People who are afraid of rejecting the community to which they feel they belong. And, and this is a big thing this is a you know so why do people deny evidence it talks about cognitive dissonance which i've talked about uh and um because cognitive dissonance is unpleasant people want to just get rid of it uh, and there are generally two ways that people can do this they can change a behavior or they can change a belief most people go with changing a belief because changing a behavior is usually difficult. Changing beliefs is often easier. That's where some element of denial comes into play. This could mean trivializing the source of the dissonance. They then will tell themselves uh, that uh, we are wrong, or they will add some sort of new belief or idea that supports or rationalizes their choice. That could entail embracing conspiracy theories. In my case, what a lot of people have done is convinced themselves that I am crazy. Uh, I am a machete-wielding madwoman who uh, set out to kill my neighbor's dogs, and I kicked a service dog, apparently, in public, and I did all these things which are complete lies, but these are the rumors going around on YouTube this is what people want to believe about me, because if they believe that, then it's a lot easier to dismiss my message. They're going to come up with something in their minds to dismiss the information we put in front of them, because it's just too uncomfortable for them to deal with it. They don't want to change their behavior, because changing their behavior might mean getting rid of their dog. What happens then? Well, then the, the members in their community 
of dog loving people, right, might reject them and they might suffer because of their choice to get rid of their dog. So they don't want to do that, right? It's easier to deny. And, uh, and, and that's where this denial comes in. So, I mean, there's a lot here. Um, it, it's saying that everyone engages in denial. We are all constantly bombarded by decisions or choices that create dissonance or conflicts. So we can't always act in accordance with our ideals. I am always trying hard to abandon my beliefs. I want to get rid of my beliefs. I don't want to have beliefs. I want to base my decisions on facts, not on what I believe, but on what is actually true. Do you know what I'm saying? So once a community absorbs an idea into its collective viewpoint, rejecting that idea becomes akin to rejecting the whole community. Uh, so that's the crux of the problem here. The problem is people feel connected to a community and they are afraid of rejecting their community's viewpoint because in doing so, they feel like they're going to reject their whole community. And, and with that, they're going to be devastated because their whole support system is going to vanish. But what can we do about this? Along with cognitive dissonance, there are many other scenarios or psychological states that tend to produce denial. These are all related to each other. Belief perseverance, which refers to people's attachment to ideas or conceptions that they have held in the past. We don't like to change our minds. And we tend to ignore new information that challenges our long-held views. See, I don't think that's true for everyone. It wasn't true for me. I used to love dogs and cats. I had very strong beliefs about pet ownership. I identified as a pet owner, as an animal lover, uh, and I had a lot of beliefs about a lot of things that I've abandoned. I abandoned those beliefs when I was confronted with evidence that did not support my beliefs. Sometimes it took a little while for me to abandon my beliefs, but I did. And I like to think that I would change my mind and abandon any beliefs I have today if confronted with evidence that shows me I am wrong. And then they mention confirmation bias, which is the seeking out and retaining only the information that supports one's view. Reactance is another. This refers to the negative feelings that people experience when their freedom is somehow threatened. Fear is also a big one. If someone finds a belief or idea to be scary, both global warming and COVID-19 are ready examples. That fear is a powerful motivator of denial. You know, so maybe people are just afraid uh, of the truth. So they deny it. People have three basic psychological needs that undergird their motivation to engage in any behavior. The first is a need for autonomy or the belief that an action came from the self. The second is the need for competence. The third one is the need for relatedness a sense of belonging, and that other people need you and value your input. For those hoping to weaken a friend or loved one's science denial, it's necessary to start from a place of respect and amity. I've, I've read this before and uh, I've talked about it. And uh, it's really, really hard because they're telling us that we have to respect and be friendly with dog worshippers now. That's really difficult for me. And I know it's difficult for a lot of you. When we see people endangering their children by placing their infants on top of pit bulls, we're supposed to respect them? I, I can't do this. I can't be friends with someone who, you know, breaks the law by bringing their dog somewhere where the dog is not allowed to be or who lets their dog bark endlessly and disturb the neighbors and drive them crazy. Uh, I, I don't know how to be respectful and friendly with these people. They make me very angry. They fill me with disgust. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. The social groups that people identify with 
tend to satisfy all three of these basic psychological needs. And because of this, people are strongly motivated to accept their group's ideas or to engage in behaviors that are valued within their social spheres. So if you're not in the person's group, they're not going to listen to you. You're an outsider. They don't care what you have to say. That's basically what it boils down to. And so from what I'm reading here and on other websites, the only way, or the best way, I, I don't know if it's possible, but they're saying that we need to get into their social sphere. We need to become one of their own. You know what I'm saying? Get on their good side. Then maybe you have a chance of getting through to them. Maybe then they will listen to you. In this other article I read about the science of science denial, you know, they talked about making these bogus studies and then presenting people with these bogus studies. And depending on who they thought uh, was presenting the information, the test subjects were more likely to accept um, the validity of the information if they believed the information was coming from someone they respected. For example, um, Republicans were more open uh, to accepting information if it was delivered to them by a uh, preacher or um, you know an entrepreneur, someone whose values were similar to theirs. If a liberal were to present them with the very same information, they would most likely deny it. They would not be as open to it. Not, it has nothing to do with the information itself, but it, it's only because the person presenting the information is someone they don't identify with, someone whose values are very different to theirs. So this is my problem, guys. What do we do? When I shared this with my husband earlier, he was laughing at me and he said, ha ha, I told you so. Uh, because uh, he has a background in psychiatry and he has been telling me for years to stop using words like dog nut. You know, uh, he thinks that's derogatory. Um, any kind of derogatory word, um, he said, will cause them to uh, become defensive and to not listen to your message. And he would say, the best way to get through to them is to be respectful. And I was like, no, these people are wrong and they're putting their children in danger and therefore they deserve to be shamed. You know, they're endangering their entire communities. How can we treat them with respect? I'm not going to do that. That's wrong, I would say. And, and we would argue about it. And, and he has maintained this position from day one and told me, no, you gotta, you gotta treat them with respect. And ah, I'm, I'm telling you, it's really hard for me because everything in me, uh, I feel like I want to disre I want to shame them. And I tried, I really tried. In the beginning, when I first started making YouTube videos, I tried being kind with these dog worshipers. And I found that the kinder I was, the more abusive they would be in return. Uh, the more aggressive I became, the more they would back off or tone down their abuse. I've made videos explaining how dog worshippers have a lot of narcissistic and psychopathic characteristics. They're bullies. A lot of them are bullies. And bullies like weak people. They target the weak. Kind of like they're dogs. You know. They see us as prey if we look weak, I think. Uh, so I don't know. What, what is the best approach? What is the way to get through to these people? Can you get through to these people? What do you think? I would really like to know your thoughts. Are science denying dog worshippers different from other science deniers? These people who came onto my channel to say that 5G was causing coronavirus and you know, wanting to spread their ridiculous ideas, which are dangerous, like I said, I'm like, we have to shame them. We need to shame these people. And uh, no, I'm not going to be respectful to them. They're killing people with their ideas. 
um, with their reckless, dangerous behavior, selfish behavior. I hate them because they are an enemy. They are an enemy to humanity. That's how I see them. And you're asking me to be friendly and respectful? Well, apparently that's the best way of getting through to them. And uh, I know that uh, at this point, uh, I'm not able to be friendly and respectful with them. This is a major flaw in my character. And I would like to overcome it. Uh, and I want to work at it. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. So I just wanted to share this information with you. And I welcome discussion on this subject. I think it's very important that we talk about this. If we want to get through to these people who are denying science and denying reality. Because like I said, like Neil deGrasse Tyson says, science is true whether or not you believe in it. Um, so anyway, I welcome your feedback and uh, the future is dog free.